This is the best translator apps for iPhone and Android. I've got seven on the list that I've used extensively over the years when living in China when I was learning. I don't use them too much anymore, but I certainly know what the good features are of all of these. So let's start with the first one, which is Google Translate. I have this one on my iPhone homepage, so that really tells you everything you need to know. So the translations are about as good as any of the others. There's lots of things in Chinese when you translate it, it just kind of doesn't translate correctly, but that goes for all of these apps. Anyway, with Google, you have pretty much the most features out of any app. So you have voice translation, handwriting, camera, and conversation. The camera's really good. You can just point your smartphone at something and it's just gonna instantly translate it onto the screen. Now, the translations aren't amazing, but if you're just traveling around somewhere and you need to translate a menu or something like that, then this just is super useful. You don't actually have to know the language that you're trying to translate. You don't have to write it down. You don't have to go through all that. Camera is something really great in Google. Not all of the apps have it. There's also some settings to change the accent that you're speaking into the app. So if maybe you want to translate your voice to another language, you can actually set some accents. Definitely not every country listed in here, but certainly in the States and England, obviously we've got different accents. So you can set that in the Google app and then it's gonna try and listen for your accent a little bit better to try and understand you more and then get a more accurate translation. Google Translate is really good if you basically just don't know the other language at all. So maybe you're on holiday in a country that you've never been to before, you really don't know any of the language, then Google Translate is just that app that is going to help you actually get along. Apple Translate is obviously only on the iPhone. So if you have an Android phone, you cannot get Apple Translate. Obviously, you're gonna work with Google Translate, but Apple is actually a really simple app and really easy to use. I think the layout is a little bit simpler and more attractive than the Google Translate. Apple Translate really is good for two things, text and voice. So it's kind of simple. There's no conversations feature like Google where you can have two people kind of saying their sentence one after the other. Basically on Apple, you just have this microphone button at the bottom, press that, speak into it. It's gonna translate it and put it on the screen. The other option is text. Just write something in here or copy paste something in here. It's gonna try and translate it for you. I have another video comparing Google and Apple Translate and you can see them. Actually, the translations between them are almost identical. So in terms of which one is more accurate, I would say they're about the same. I really got no clear winner out of those, but it's very, very simple to use, but only on the iPhone. So if you have an Android phone, you won't be able to get it. The next one is iTranslate. This is a really popular app. If you search for translation software in the App Store, you're probably gonna get hit with an ad for iTranslate. iTranslate has a bunch of free features, but it also has some paid features as well, which kind of are quite expensive, and maybe you're thinking, should I actually pay for those? Well, firstly, the free version, you get translation software mostly for free. So if you just wanna do some translations from one language to another, this is free and it's pretty good as well. You get the iTranslate app, but they also have, I think it's called iTranslate Converse, which is a separate app, it's orange. You can basically speak into it and it's gonna translate it into the second language for you. I've also compared this to Google before and the translations are pretty accurate. It's good at uh, actually listening for your voice both in English and Chinese that I said it understood what I was saying, translated them pretty well. The Converse app is free as well, so it's worth a download. Now, do you need to pay extra for all the other stuff on iTranslate? Well, what's different about iTranslate is that whereas Google and Apple are just translation services and nothing else, iTranslate has phrase books, phrases, and kind of is a tool to start learning the other language as well. So if you maybe want to go to a different country, maybe you wanna start speaking some short phrases, rather than just translating what you say, you maybe wanna try and get along, then iTranslate does have a lot of those phrases. So the subscription really, I guess you could think of it as buying a phrase book. So rather than going and actually buying a physical phrase book, it's obviously all digital on the app with you, along with all of those translation services. Bravo LOL is next on the list. This is kind of a unique app to me personally. I use this all the time. This is also on my homepage along with Google Translate, but it's totally different. It kind of only works for language learners. So I use it a lot for a lot of phrases in Chinese that I don't know yet, or maybe wanna clarify the meaning of. If you are a complete novice and you're looking for an app to literally speak into 
and for it to be translated into the other language, then this isn't for you. This app really is more of a dictionary phrase book, but also for me anyway, specifically with Chinese, I found it to be the most accurate at translating uh, language, maybe character pairs and um, longer phrases and sentences. This app seems to get them most accurate most of the time. The downside obviously though, is that you need to actually know the target language that you're putting in there initially. So obviously I'm really familiar with Chinese, so I kind of get it already, even though I just wanna clarify the meaning of something, then this is perfect. If I had no idea what I was putting into it, then obviously it just wouldn't work. Next one is Microsoft Translator. This is kind of underrated. I think Google really gets most of the downloads, but this app is just as good, if not better. I actually prefer the layout and the design. I think it's more modern. It's also really easy to choose what you wanna translate. So there's these big options down at the bottom for voice and text. It also has a camera feature as well. It's just as good as Google Translate. One kind of weird thing in this app though is that if you wanna have a conversation with someone, you can do that on two separate phones. They have to have Microsoft Translator. They have to input a code that you will generate on your app, which is kind of strange. If you're really close to someone, obviously going through this is kind of a hassle, but I guess it would work in some situations. Other than that, you can just use the voice translate feature to, I guess, translate your uh, voices one by one. Microsoft Translator does also have phrase books as well though. So it kind of makes paying for iTranslate even less of a good deal. I wouldn't say it's as robust as iTranslate, but there are some sentences, some phrases in here. If you just wanna try and learn the basics or listen to how they're said in the other language and then try it yourself, you can find that in this app. I really like it, but we move on to the next one, which is Baidu. And again, I guess this is sort of influenced by me learning Chinese. So Baidu is, I guess, the Google of China in many ways, but Baidu Translate has many different languages, but obviously Chinese to English and the other way around is really the focus of the app. They actually redesigned the app completely recently with an upgrade. It looks completely different. The design is a bit more modern. You also get some more features in here than before. You can use the camera to translate things just like Google. You can also screenshot something and then upload that into the camera and get it to translate the picture rather than just translating stuff live. The conversation feature is also pretty cool. It's in a separate page and it kind of lays it out like iMessage or uh, WhatsApp or something. So it's like a conversation between you and the other person. Also with Baidu, there's this feature called cross app translate. So if you're in a different app, you can actually highlight a bit of text and then go to the options menu. And Baidu should be in the options menu with this feature called cross app translate. So that text will basically be copied and then pasted into Baidu and then Baidu will translate it for you. It's a pretty cool feature. There are apps that I didn't mention here, like Yandex. If you're learning Russian, then you might wanna go for that one. It's just gonna be more focused on Russian to English because obviously it's a Russian app. So let me know which ones you use, have used, or some that I didn't mention on the list. You can put them below as always. That is it for this one though. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you in the next one.